You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Well, there's a lot to talk about, but I do want to go through this game because there's so many opinions, and I, and I even contemplated maybe not doing it, but there's so many opinions out there, and it's it's obviously getting, it's it's feeling like a landmine, Um on Twitter because everybody is very, or Facebook or whatever, very impassioned about what they think either is or isn't the problem. And, um, I mean, it's, that, that's just, that's all it is. Um, I've, I've made the mistake occasionally of putting out statistics that are shocking and people don't like it, or it just, it blows up out of control with, you know, people retweeting it and saying, this is how you know such and such should be fired and shot and everything. And it's like, okay, this is spiraling spiraling a bit. Um, and now we've got the Pat McAfee show. Um, lots and lots of stuff going on, especially Aaron Rodgers' comments about himself. Tom Clement saying this is the highest single game grade yet this season on Sunday's loss against the Commanders. Um, I'm told that it's one of those things you have to go watch for yourself. Um, because he kind of like chuckled about it, but still, even if it's not that big of a deal in terms of, you know, Rogers not excusing himself, it's still a big deal that the quarterback coach said, this is his best performance because that's not my recollection, but that's what this is about today. My recollection is garbage. Doesn't really mean much because in the moment I can't see all that much. I'm going to try to track as many things as I can. I'm still going to do good, bad. I also want to keep track of Aaron Rodgers because that's the central focus. I don't exactly know how to do it. Um, I know people are going to get mad depending on how I do it. But um, like I said, I I want to track at least how many passes are um, catchable or on target. So either, either it's on target, meaning it's right where it should be. Catchable, meaning maybe not super on target, but should have caught that. And then, you know not catchable, which is what the heck was that? There's a whole lot of other nuance that people keep bringing up. You know, um, one of the biggest ones that seems to be a recurring theme that I'm seeing several people, including Sam Holman, right on this podcast network, if you listen to his most recent podcast, talk about the fact that it seems as though we're finding success when we run the Matt LaFleur plays. However, we're we're very much getting away from that. And, and I think... I don't know that that's the reality, but it, but it makes sense when you plug it in and kind of check it against some other things. It does make sense, including even what Aaron Rodgers is saying. Well, it's not his fault. Guys are just doing the wrong thing. Okay, but is the expectation that they are running the Aaron Rodgers offense? Because maybe they're not running the Aaron Rodgers offense effectively, but the question should be, should we be running the Aaron Rodgers offense or should we be running the Matt LaFleur offense? So two things can be true. It's not necessarily Rodgers' fault because the receivers aren't winning as they're supposed to, but we shouldn't be putting them in situations like this. We should be running Matt LaFleur's system, which doesn't rely on, as Aaron Rodgers said, wide receivers lining up and winning down the field. That's stupid. That makes sense to me. I don't know if that's the reality, but it does. I mean, it feels that way, doesn't it? We, when was the last time for a while, especially when Christian Watson was here, felt like there was a ton of motion and movement and all these kind of creative things. Now it feels kind of like 2018. It feels like 2017. It feels like, you know, spread them out, line them up, run down the field. Rogers makes a great throw and, you know, we're, 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 we're cruising, except that's not working because just like 2018, we don't have the horses. We don't have a quarterback playing well enough. We don't have an offensive line playing well enough, and we don't have wide receivers playing well enough. But I don't know. The, the, the point is, I don't know how much. I mean, I'll try to. 
keep that in mind as we go through it. I'm not going to chart it because I've already got too much going on. But with that said, this takes a very long time, so why don't we just go ahead and get started? I am going to very casually, I, I think I'm just going to choose not to chart special teams because that's just going to throw everything off. But I am going to just watch it, and if something good happens, um, I'll mention it. But, you know, some sometimes guys are like, oh, this is our best player. And it's like the, the guy didn't play a single, you know, snap or anything. All right, so Packers get the ball first. And I will say, right out of the gate, we are lined up with, we start off with four guys spread out. One of them is Mercedes Lewis, who looks like he's going to come back in tight to the formation. So just, you know, again, kind of feels Aaron Rodgersy, I guess. But a uh, good pitch to the outside for, oh, I got to pull up the game so I can get the specifics. And I'll tell you what, the two guys that really stood out on this run play that went for, let me pull it up, eight yards are Mercedes Lewis and Yash Nyman. Again, just for those that are new, positive plays, the question is, why was it positive? So I'm not looking on the other side of the field where maybe somebody did a good job. If it succeeded, why? If it failed, why? So if you did a good job, but you didn't necessarily impact the result of the play, I'm, I'm not looking. That's just what we're doing here today. So eight yard run, pitch out to the right side. Mercedes and Yash Nyman absolutely stood out. You had, um, I believe it was Runyon and Yash pulling. Yash ended up blocking two guys. Runyon didn't block anybody, but you know, that's sort of to be expected. <laughs> Next play. And again, if I had to just look at this and see what we're doing, we had two running backs in the backfield. They both split out. So we're running four wide. Two of those guys are wide receivers. Ended up just obviously throwing a quick screen, quick pass to Aaron Jones. They did end up converting the first down, but it was about a, uh, let's see, it was a three-yard gain. So you can call that successful. But at the end of the day, Lazard and who is that? Tunyon, I think. Lazard and Tunyon are the two guys out blocking. They didn't block a single person. Both guys missed their block. Tell you what, though, one cool thing, if you're watching this along with me, check out Zach Tom, who ran from the tackle position, sprinted out there, and blew up the guy that Alan Lazard, or uh, I think it was that um, that Tunyon missed. But still, the guy that Lazard missed ends up making the tackle. So I'm going to call that a negative for Tunyon and Lazard. By the way, the other thing I want to keep an eye on is how much of this is the Aaron Rodgers needed to throw the ball fast because the offensive line was doing a bad job because that's sort of the narrative. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. I think they maybe came up with a game plan that helped the offensive line. But the problem is I don't think the offensive line needed as much help as they thought. So they unnecessarily limited themselves, never got away from that plan. And that was the situation. That's my theory going in. Next play again, they run a quick pitch to the outside. They, they do a shift, put in motion the tight end to the other side of the formation where the run is going. This time it's Tyler Davis, so he's off of Yash Nyman. He comes in, does the exact same thing Mercedes Lewis did, and did a great job. I mean, a fantastic job. Lazard is blocking down the field. Nyman again gets on his horse, gets out in space, does a decent enough job. I don't know that he did a great job, but I'm not going to necessarily call it a negative. We'll call it, I guess, neutral. But some really good blocking, just, just getting out and getting in front of everybody. Again, I think if Yash maybe does a little bit better job on his block and get into that linebacker, kind of seeing him a little earlier and not get him around him, Maybe Aaron Jones slips behind Lazard and gets a few more yards, but um, Tyler Davis and Lazard for sure at least deserve a lot of credit for this. It's hard to not give Aaron Jones credit, but he's kind of just running in space with nobody there. So, you know, do I give him credit every time he touches the ball? I don't know. Again, we line up. Um, we've actually got Lazard and Mercedes Lewis in tight. Got our two or maybe three, I can't see from this angle, wide receivers and just run the ball. I tell you what, John Runyon does a phenomenal job blocking on this play. Usually if it's a negative, I don't hand out positives, but I'm going to in this case. He absolutely crucified a guy, and he does what we just never are able to seem to do, and that is get up to the next level. Unfortunately, Myers doesn't necessarily do a great job, and the biggest problem is Yash Nyman. He goes over to try to help Mercedes Lewis, gets a little too invested in that, and not so much the linebacker. Linebacker comes up, pops. And um, there's really nowhere for him to, for Jones to cut back because the guy that Myers was blocking wasn't really well blocked. So right now it's third and four, three wide receivers line up to the left side, one tight end to the right side, running back in the backfield. Again, nothing Lafleurian about this. Remember the whole Matt Lafleur, Kyle Shanahan thing where all the plays are designed to kind of look like each other so nobody really knows what you're doing. Can't tell if it's a run or a handoff. The guy's in shotgun with wide receivers just spread out. There's nothing about this that feels Shanahan-y. Um, Rodgers has multiple options. Sammy Watkins is open. Al Lazard comes open and Lazard just straight up drops it. I mean, it, it was, it was a great route. Again, that's another thing to pay attention to. Apparently these guys can't get open. We got two receivers open on this play so far. That hasn't been the case, but he gets open. 
Ball hits him right in the hands and he drops it. And instead of a first down conversion where he would have caught it, we end up having to punt. So we only have one, two, three, four players with negative marks so far on the entire team. Two of them have gone to Alan Lazard. And that's when we get our first phenomenal punt by uh, Pat O'Donnell. Puts him down at the three-yard line. But now we get the, again, not going to do special teams this week, but get to see the defense a little bit. Only a gain of three is a really good run stop. Hard to know exactly who to give credit to. Um, Clearly, Rashawn. I I think Rashawn and Quay, they're the ones credited with the tackles, and those are the two that make the most sense. Um, Maybe could consider Devondre, but I'm just going to stick with Rashawn and Quay Walker on that. Next play is a really quick pass to Curtis Samuel. Really, really heads up play by Quay or by uh, Razul Douglas. Almost ends up, well, almost a pick six, first of all, but then almost a disaster because he tries to jump it instead of making a tackle. But he's playing off in the slot. Samuel runs just a quick out, trying to get out in space, and Razul just beelines right for him. Immediately reads the route, nearly jumps it. Great recognition. He would have got docked for it if he ended up just missing the tackle and it was a big play, but he got a hold of him just enough to make the tackle. So great play by Razul Douglas on that one. And the next play, they're taking a shot to uh, Terry McLaurin. And I think about four guys can get credit on this one. Again, another one that could have been picked off. Uh, Jair and Razul kind of run into each other, so it doesn't end up getting picked off. But you've also got Rashawn Gary and Devondre Campbell blitzing the quarterback and getting pressure so that Tyler Heineke, Taylor Heineke, has to throw off his back foot. So I'm going to give all four, Razul, Jair, Rashawn, and Devondre credit for that. With that, they got a punt. You got the punt, penalty, repunt. Ended up working to our advantage a little bit. Packers get the ball at the Washington 42-yard line. Two running backs in the backfield. The throw is to Tunyon. I tell you what, again, the idea that the offensive line can't block, the only reason it looked good is because, uh, you know, they, they threw it real quick. That ain't the case on this play. He's standing there. Should I get my stopwatch going here? Let's do the stopwatch. So Rodgers is in the pocket for 3.79 seconds before he breaks the pocket. And honestly, he probably could have stood there a little bit longer, but he decides he's going to roll out. And then at nearly five seconds, he actually pulls the trigger. So he had 3.8 seconds in a clean pocket. Not Doc and Rogers. I'm just saying that's, that's a positive for the offensive line. And I will say, and again, people are going to get upset. And if you're following along, you, you feel free to, uh, to tell me if I'm wrong here. This very clearly seems like a route that is designed. It's a very scheme-based thing. So if I had to guess, this is a Matt LaFleur thing, not, not guys just going out there winning your one-on-ones. They want this to go to Lazard. Lazard is open, and he doesn't throw it to Lazard, who's wait. You know, the amount of times the guys are waving their hands around and he doesn't throw it, I just, I don't get it. You say, well, he's on the run. Right, he's on the run and he throws to Tunyon. Why isn't he on the run throwing to Lazard? I don't understand. So just, just so, so we're clear on this, Aaron Jones runs out of the backfield into the, and immediately turns around and holds his hands out like he's about to catch the pass. And I have to assume the intention of that is to draw people up, and they go for it. And Lazard breaks right through. Two guys go to jump Aaron Jones. Lazard breaks through that. By the way, Tunyon comes open right away, too. Now, Lazard has not come out of his break, but if he wants to, he can throw it to Tunyon. But he's staring down Lazard, waiting to see if he's going to come out of it. He has a nice cut. He ends up beating, I think it's the safety. Almost looks like he's trying to throw to Dobbs, which I don't understand. Or no, I'm sorry, that's Aaron Jones. Maybe that's what the intention was supposed to be. He wanted wanted to get this to Jones. See, and, and this is... Again, I'm not a quarterback, I don't know, but he's got two guys open, and he's trying to stare down Jones. So, so I think the intention is he's running into the flat, and then he's going to run it out and up. And the hope is as they bite on him coming into the flat, he can run up the sideline wide open. But there's a guy standing 10 yards off. That's never going to work. Get off of it, Rodgers. Again, Rodgers has a clean pocket. Now, the, maybe somebody's bearing down a little bit. Fine. Shuffle, plant your feet, and throw it. He decides to completely bail out of the pocket. Okay, fine. Bail out of the pocket, but you got two guys open. Two of them. And actually, Dobbs is insanely wide open, but he, he, this play was so, are we just running plays with one guy in mind? Because Dobbs is literally, he gave up on the route and he's staring at Aaron Jones like, oh, where's the ball? Like he's expecting it to go that way. He could not be any more wide open down the sideline. So when he finally turns around and realizes, I'm sure Rodgers wanted to stab Romeo for not turning around and realizing, hey, I'm scrambling for my life. Please turn around. But you know what? You got Liz- so so on this route. Just to be clear, Jones is the one guy that's covered. Lazard is open. Tunyon is open. Dobbs is open. He's staring down Aaron Jones with the intention of it has to go there. And just for good measure, so is Dylan. He could have thrown it to Dylan too if he wanted to. It's a little check down. He breaks the pocket and and again instead of throwing to Lazard, who's 
you know, let's say about 10 yards further down the field than Tunyon and Dobbs, who's waving his arms around, which again, he did, he turned around late. So I understand whatever, but he is at the about, you know, I don't know, 14 yard line waving his hand like, Hey, 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 I just figured out what's going on. Help me. I'll, I'll hit me up. He throws it to Tunyon and rather than throwing it to him in a place that makes sense where he can kind of turn and get some extra yards, he burns it into the ground where he has to dive and try to catch it. And he picks up no extra yards. Uh, it just it just feels like he's not really going through progressions. He's saying, I, I, I think this guy will be open. So he stares at him and he waits and he waits. And then that guy doesn't get open. So he panics, he breaks the pocket. And the first guy he th- sees open, he throws it to him. Doesn't see the other two guys wide open further down the field, even though Lazard is literally directly behind him. Just didn't notice it, didn't care. Here you go. And then he throws a bad ball to Tunyon. I don't know what else to say. Four guys are open. He wants to force it to the one guy that's not. And then he throws to the one guy that's closest to him and throws a bad ball. So it's, it's, it's a positive play, but I don't care. Aaron Rodgers gets a negative on this. That was stupid. That sucked. Tell you what, though, it was a positive play, so I am going to hand out some positives. I'm going to start with the offensive line. I, I, I didn't do this at all last week. I need to do it this week. And it's, I, I think it's just all of them. I mean, every single one of them. I mean, Yash Nyman has a one-on-one. He wins it. Josh Myers has a one-on-one. He wins it. And they actually do a uh, pretty interesting thing where they pulled the right guard. They had Zach Tom double-team the defensive tackle along with Elton Jenkins. And then our right guard runs to the left side. The guy that Zach Tom, you know, you would usually think would take the guy off that. End. And he hits him and he blocks him. Zach Tom is helping Elton Jenkins. He sees Runyon losing a little bit to his left side. He sprints over to that side, gives him a little extra shove buys Rodgers a little bit more time. I mean, everybody just did a fan. Everybody did a great job on this play, in my opinion, except Rodgers. But all the offensive linemen are going to get positives for this. Because ultimately, the reason that this worked is because Rodgers had four seconds. And that was play action, by the way, for those of you keeping score. Anyway, second and four. Here's the other thing I really want to hammer home. The idea that we have to throw at the line of scrimmage because our offensive line is so trash. Let, let, me, let me pull out the old stopwatch for this play. Aaron Rodgers throws on, on second and whatever I said, second and four, an 11-yard pass to Alan Lazard. How long do you think it took? From the time the ball was snapped to the time that he threw the ball, how long do you think it took? For 11 yards. Remember, because we have to throw at the line of scrimmage. We can only throw five-yard passes because our offensive line is so stupid. 1.58 seconds to go 11 yards down the field. And that was an in-breaking route. If he was running in a straight line, 1.58 seconds could have gotten us 20 yards. You don't need 2.5 seconds to go 10 yards. You don't need to protect your offensive line by throwing wide receiver screens all day long. That's not true. That's not reality. These things happen in the blink of an eye. 1.58 seconds he threw that ball. Perfectly clean pocket. But 1.58 seconds, Rodgers, Lazard get the credit for that. 11-yard pickup. Good route by him. If he doesn't get open, there's not a lot of options. You probably have to check it down to A.J. Dillon, get maybe two-ish yards on that. So Lazard is our best and worst player on this team right now. <laughs> He's doing everything, including ruining everything. We don't have an offense without him, but we also wouldn't nearly fail as much so far. Next play is a run by A.J. Dillon, and this is actually a really nice run. It's only for, uh, it's only for three yards, so it, it, it seems like it kind of sucks, but it's something that I haven't seen from Dillon in a long time, and that is just a really quick jump cut and then burst through the hole. And it's actually blocked beautifully. It's just Tyler Davis cannot hold that block long enough. He's, I mean, everything about, I mean, it's so much cleaner than what I've seen in in previous weeks where guys are just missing or guys are not getting off their block fast enough to get up to the next level. You got Mercedes Lewis and Tyler Davis double teaming a guy. Lewis hits him for about a half a second, immediately gets up to the next level, blocks him beautifully in the, in the correct direction, creates a lane behind his back. So you're running between Mercedes Lewis and Tyler Davis. Everybody does a great job, including Tyler, who's, who's in position. He just can't hold it long enough. And so that hole kind of collapses in on him. So unfortunately, it's a negative play, and it's Tyler Davis's fault. Next play is very obviously a Matt LaFleur play. We've got uh, three receivers lined up. Uh, Mercedes Lewis is tight to the right side of the formation. DeGuara is one of the receivers to the left side. He comes in motion. Use that motion to come in and help block on a run play off to the right side so that you have Mercedes Lewis and DeGuara and Lazard to the right side blocking down the field. It's actually, again, it it just seems, and and again, I haven't seen this in a while. Even if it's not perfectly executed, it just seems, it doesn't seem so clunky. It's a tad clunky, but um, 
you've got Mercedes Lewis, and, and this is the second time he's done this. He just, just, I mean, the timing for Mercedes is beautiful here. He blocks a guy just long enough for Tyler Dave, or for, excuse me, Josiah DeGuar to come in and take over. And he's already got his eyes on the next guy. He's looking upfield. He holds him just long enough. DeGuara gets there and blocks him. Mercedes disengages and gets to the next level. All the while, Yash Nyman is working up the field and Alan Lazard to their block. Josh Myers gets up to the next level, walls off one of the linebackers, doing a good job there. Zach Thomas completely erased somebody to the other side. Elton Jenkins seems to be struggling a little bit. We'll see what happens. I got it freeze framed here. That guy face planted. So uh, Elton was in bad position, but <laughs> he fell on his face. Yash does a pretty good job getting up there, but I think he kind of blocked him in the wrong direction, kind of creates a little pile over where Aaron Jones is trying to run. DeGuara eventually loses that block, so you've got too many people out in front of Jones. Jones trying to cut back, but there's a guy that, that DeGuara let go kind of coming for him. You know, I mean, you can only hold the blocks for so long. People are starting to lose their blocks now. Lazard is carrying his guy all the way down the field. Aaron Jones absolutely is getting credit for this, the patience and the burst and everything else. The guy that came off of DeGuara and got, caught him from behind, he breaks that tackle. Gets up to the next level, spin moves for a couple more yards. So Jones, 100,000% made this a successful run. In all honesty, the, the, the blocking is kind of, I know it sounds weird to say ugly when I just said it looked good. I, I, just, I just mean the timing and everything kind of seems like it's in rhythm. It's a complete mess when they actually get down there. But, you know, it just, it, it looks like they're kind of know what they're doing, which is nice. But I, I think I'm just going to give this to Jones. I got to at least put Lazard in there. He freaking erased that guy. I don't know. It's hard not to, to add in all the contributors. All right, I'm going to put in Lazard, uh, DeGuara, and Mercedes because he doesn't even get the edge without those two guys. All right, first and 10 from the Washington 15. Real quick out by uh, Alan Lazard. Romeo Dobbs does a great job coming in and block. So Rogers, Lazard, Dobbs, getting credit on that one. But that is a big 12-yard pickup on uh, first and 10 from the 15. Next play is a one-yard loss. Seems to be... You know, I think you can pretty clearly put that on Mercedes Lewis. I don't know that this is going for a ton of yards, um, but Lewis just got beat immediately. That guy gets into the backfield and takes down Jones. So Mercedes Lewis getting a negative on that. And then the final play, a touchdown, is again, 100 million percent, this is a Matt LaFleur play. It's one of those, it's similar to, uh, the, you know, if, if you watch the Chalk Talk segments that Clayton does, I did one with him. Uh, last time we scored a touchdown, there was so much going on on that play. Where the one that Mercedes Lewis caught. It was basically like a double fake. This isn't quite like that, but you got um, Lazard and Dobbs to the left side, uh, Josiah DeGuara and Mercedes Lewis to the right side. DeGuara goes in motion from right to left. Rodgers does a great job selling. Anybody reading his eyes is saying this is not a handoff. But again, you want their eyes to go in one. It's, these are magic tricks, right? It's it's supposed to be sort of play act. So the first fake is the, is the, the handoff, but they're looking at it going, yeah, right. We see DeGuara running out there, and you even see Dobbs kind of starting to block down the field. So it's very obvious to anyone looking, this is going to be a pass to Josiah DeGuara in the flat with Romeo Dobbs blocking. Timing is perfect. Josiah turns around. Literally, the linebacker is staring out in that direction, staring. As he gets pulled a little bit too far that way, Zach Tom is just keying in on him like a heat-seeking missile, and he walls him off. It's done. It's game over. He cannot get back to where they're going. Where are they trying to go? They're actually running an inside screen to Aaron Jones. Elton Jenkins has already got a guy blocked. Zach Thomas got a guy walled off. Josh Myers is running down the field to try to get somebody that's over there, but nobody's even looking in that direction. Zach Tom does kind of miss the block a little bit, but it doesn't matter. There's so much wide open space that he gets in. This is, again, I, I, I can't necessarily disagree so far with Sam Holman's assessment. I'm not saying it's 100% in terms of Aaron Rodgers stuff never works and Matt LaFleur stuff never misses, but it, it just, it does feel night and day. It seems like they're in sync and it's in rhythm and everything just everything just works. And and you again, you don't need superstar. On on that play that I was complaining about that was a, a bad pass to uh Tunyon that was in the dirt when he had Lazard and Dobbs wide open because he's staring down Aaron Jones. I mean, that's sort of a LaFleur play where we got Alan Lazard running wide open, Dobbs is wide open, Tunyon's wide open. Is it because they're these elite psychotic athletes that just break an ankles out there? No. They're running open in space because it was the right call offensively against the right call defensively. It's schematic. It's not line up, run down the field, and win your route, and I'm going to throw a perfect pass. This is, this is a magic trick. We tricked them. Same thing we did last week with Mercedes Lewis. That was not going out and winning your route. That was trickery. We fooled them. We got them looking the wrong direction, and we got a touchdown out of it. So, I mean, there's a lot to, to hand out here. Rodgers, for sure. He didn't do much as far as the pass, but the, the selling, it was beautiful. 
the fact that his eyes are already keyed in on Deguara when he's going to hand off the ball so that every defender looking at Rodgers is going, you dummy, I can see exactly what you're doing. Your eyes are already looking down the field. Well, they pulled it back the other way. Uh, Aaron Jones did a good job. I think you can give DeGuara credit for his, I mean, the, the timing was so pretty the way that DeGuara turns to catch the ball right as Rodgers kind of cocks his arm. And although the blocking wasn't perfect, Elton Jenkins 100% gets credit. I mean, he had a guy locked up. Aaron Jones ran within inches of this guy and he couldn't make a tackle. Elton Jenkins had him completely locked up. And then Josh Myers and Zach Tom, not the prettiest blocks in the world, but enough to get in the way so that Jones can just sneak into the end zone. So, so all of them are going to get credit for that. Anyways, kickoff, we allow him to get back to the 30 because obviously, again, I'm not really docking anybody. It's kind of hard to tell exactly who's supposed to be when and where. I don't really understand how f- that all works. But if, if I had to dock somebody, it'd probably be Dallin Levitt. His feet got away from him. He might even got tripped up. I'm not sure. But he ended up falling, doing a somersault, and then uh, getting up and still making a tackle, which is great. But again, it was at the 30-yard line. Anyways, defense is on the field. Pretty good field position for Washington. Fantastic coverage uh, down the field. Pressure gets there, but unfortunately, there's an open lane for the quarterback to run through. He takes off and runs. Devondre minimizes some of that damage, comes up and stops him after five yards. Feels like he got 40 yards on that run. It's hard to know exactly who to blame, but I, I think it would have to be on Jaron Reed. On one hand, you want guys to be aggressive, but you know Rashawn is trying to get around the outside. Reed decides he's going to try to loop around to the inside, and then on top of that, 77, their offensive guard takes Reed and carries him so far to the inside that it leaves this giant gap there. So, I mean, technically it's Rashawn and Reed, but I, I, I I would have to assume that's, that's Reed's fault for leaving that giant of an open space right where he was standing. I hate to dock aggression because usually I'll, I'll, I'll take those, but it just, because it's so obvious, I'm just going to go ahead and and do it. Second and five, uh, Washington runs to the right side, picks up two yards. Packers defense just in general doing a good job. Dean Lowry, probably the number one to to focus on here. Not only did he hold his guy off, but he he actually pushed him a little bit into the backfield. Rashawn, uh, Rashawn did a pretty good job holding the edge. They're trying to run to the inside of Dean and Rashawn, but Kenny is also there just really clogging it up. And then you got Darnell Savage doing a great job of, of again, what I had mentioned last week about, you know, I don't know where the linebackers are, but I'm seeing safeties, Savage and, and, uh, and Amos coming up and filling those holes. They actually tried to create a lane between Lowry and Rashawn, and they had somebody coming through that hole to try to lead block, and Savage just kind of blew that. First of all, Rashawn kind of grabbed him. was like, no, you're not doing that. Devondre's there, and Savage tries to squeeze in between everybody to, to blow that up. And ultimately, Rashawn grabs the guy as he tries to run through him and drags him down. But that's, that's great effort from at least uh, four guys. Rashawn, Lowry, Kenny, and Savage. Next play is an incompletion. I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, I don't know that anybody gets a ton of credit. There really wasn't much pressure. The coverage seemed fine, but they're playing zone defense, and the ball ultimately went to a guy that I don't think it should have gone to, and it was a bad decision, or excuse me, a bad throw, um, and it was another Razul Douglas dropped interception. I'm not going to dock him for that. Maybe I should. I don't know, but you know, we'll, we'll call it a pass breakup, but not give him credit because he should have caught it. <laughs> So we'll just leave that one alone in terms of blame or whatever, but that's what happened. It was a bad pass. Packers didn't do anything wrong that I can see. The one thing that I'm curious about, if you're following along, is there would have been a route developing deep right part of the field. I'm curious if Savage would have known enough to follow him up that way. At first, I thought he wasn't, and this was about to be blown, but he he turned and ran the other direction after the quarterback threw the ball. So I'm just curious what would have happened on that. Glad we didn't have to find out. But with that, two in a row now, Washington has to punt. Everything's going beautiful, right? Packers just got themselves a touchdown. Moving down the field, getting into rhythm. Things are looking pretty. Packers defense got off the field twice. Bing, bang, boom. Punt the ball, what happens? Amari lets it hit the dirt. Washington recovers. So now we get the uh, first and 10 from the Green Bay 17-yard line. I'll tell you what, man. I, 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 I can't fully make up my mind on Darnell Savage. I know a lot of people. There's some people that think that he gets too much hate. and some. I think most people at this point have given up on him. I, I kind of like him when I watch. If nothing else, I really think he seems to have an understanding of things. Just on this play, for example, he creeps up near the line of scrimmage, basically comes inside the box. Devondre's pointing and looks over at him and kind of like shakes his head. Like, yeah, exactly. In other words, he recognized what was going on just like Devondre did. And sure enough, they end up running right where Savage was, and Savage tries to shoot right through that gap. He ends up getting blocked tries to squeeze through there and make a tackle can't quite do it certainly not going to dock him for that but it's the recognition and the aggression and saying i'm going to do this and fires through the hole 
I just appreciate that he does that. We don't see that from the linebackers, but I see it from Savage. And actually, as the, the guy on the end sees Savage creeping forward, he's like, oh, shoot, I got to get up. And Savage tries to squeeze through like, oh, don't touch me, you know, tries to get past that block. He just can't quite do it in time and ends up getting just smashed into uh, Devontae Wyatt. But even still, he fights through, tries to come around, and is actually able to slow down the running back enough, kind of tips it, you know, kind of grabs him by the ankle a little bit to slow him down so that Devondre Campbell can get there. And Devondre ends up popping him. Tell you what, I think Devontae Wyatt did a pretty good job, too. I mean, he wasn't able to disengage and make a tackle or whatever. He was to the inside of uh, where Savage was, but he stood his guy straight up. And I'm starting to see more of this, more of the the safeties coming up and filling the roles of Quay Walker, and I kind of like it, even though Quay had a great day, and I'm very excited to see all the plays he makes. We already have seen one or maybe two from Quay. I'm not trying to doc, uh, trash the guy, but I just, I've seen positive things when this happened. So I'm actually going to do uh, Savage and Devondre. I'm going to call that positive for both of them. Anyways, four-yard gain, that's going to make it second and six. They end up running uh, wide to the outside for eight yards. Um, can't give any positives on that because it was obviously negative, but it's really hard to determine what they should have done better. Um, I think Kingsley does, a, and Igbare, who has the edge, as far as I can tell, does exactly what he's supposed to. I think this is the play they were in the Wildcats, so you can't, you have to account for the quarterback and whether he's going to end up keeping it. You got Razul, who has the edge edge in terms of accounting for the wide receiver tight end, whatever, off, off to the outside. He does a good job of taking the edge away makes him cut back inside, and you've got Devondre Campbell and Darnell Savage running as fast as they can to come in and, and take him down. And they do. Both of them make the tackle, but it's after eight yards. So I don't I don't know. I'm sure they did something wrong, but I don't know what that would have been. Next play, it is uh, first and five from the five-yard line. First and goal. End up losing a yard. Kudos to Slayton and Kenny, who take away the the gap he's clearly supposed to be running through. You got an offensive lineman trying to squeeze through the hole so he can get up to the next level and block, but there's nothing there, and the running back's like, I'll forget that. He bounces it to the outside. Jair and Devondre are right there. Jair actually pops him real hard, stops his momentum. It actually works out pretty well because he goes backward, and then after he regains his balance, tries to run forward, Devondre's there to bring him down. So fantastic play by everybody. Again, so far through this game, I know there was the one disaster by Amari, and not everything has been perfectly clean or whatever, but this feels so good. Just compared to, to the other games, and I know it's it's about to collapse, but just things feel right. You know, I mean, the, the aggression from, from, I mean, Devondre feels different in this game. Savage feels different. I mean, not necessarily different, but he, he, the, the aggression is there. Quay feels, uh, Jair, the, the recognition and the speed to close on these plays. And even the bad plays, I'm looking at it going, I don't know what they could have done. You know, I mean, there's the Rodgers play where it's like, I wish you would have done something better, but whatever, it's a positive play. You know, uh, it's just things feel, up to this point, really good. Like, better than I've seen in the last several weeks that I've been watching. Which is strangely encouraging because of how discouraging this game is. But it, it does feel like, in a way, they turned a corner. And I don't know if they just gave up or what exactly happened uh, to make it as, as big of a disaster as it was. I mean, if, if, th- if they could just consistently be this, this is such a good football team. The scheme, offensively and defensively, the 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 play. I mean, the off, the offense is is different in terms of you know you need the scheme more, but these guys, man, the hustle and the speed and the strength and everything of this defense is is so imposing, and you can feel it, and it's stifling. Obviously, they end up. Uh, well, I guess it's maybe not obvious, but they they stop them. I mean, they end up getting a field goal out of this, but they started at the what seventeen yard line. Don't get in. I I, I want to just stop right now and just be like, you know what, this is a good team. I'm not watching the rest of this game. This is a good team. We got a shot against Buffalo. You know, as long as there's no disasters that cause us to completely fall apart, I like this team. I do like this team. I like these collection of players. It it freaking breaks my heart because it's just not working. But man, they're, they're really, when you watch it just work, I love it. When it all just comes together, you watch it and just go, oh, that was pretty. You know, with the offense especially, it's like that, that is so smooth. When it's executed properly, the defense, it's a combination of like, oh, that was real nice, but mostly just, dang. Look at the, I mean, Razul Douglas jumping that route. I haven't seen a guy jump around, I mean, just instantly, as soon as he breaks, he knows exactly what it is. He takes the exact right angle. He gets his hands right on the ball. I mean, he's right there. Twice on that drive, Razul dropped an interception. He's right there. And I really honestly just wonder if the if those little things went that direction. If it was a pick six, Instead of a play that ends up getting punted, that ends up getting dropped, that ends up getting recovered, that ends up turning into three more points. 
What does that do to the the momentum, to the drive? Because most people said that was the moment that this this game turned. I'm not even seeing that because I'm watching this team start at the 17, this defense, and shutting them down. We got a couple more plays, but I'm just saying, I'm I'm how are we a half hour into this? We got to speed up. Now we're pretty much on track. The first quarter is almost done. Anyways, last couple of plays, let's rip through them. But um, Jair, Devondre, Slayton, Kenny for that play, just blowing it up. And, and again, the, the quantity. How many plays now have I said that was like four guys? That was five guys that made that work. And it's all in sync. That touchdown pass, the synchronicity of the whole thing, the timing of everything. It just, mmm, it's so pretty. Next play is a run, goes for three yards. Antonio Gibson gets three yards on the play. All kinds of motion and movement and the communication between, you know, uh, Devondre sprinting across the field. And then as he goes over that way, communicating to Amos. And then as he comes back, I mean, it's it's all there. Everybody's there. They're talking. Everything's going good. I love it that the communication is kind of just, you know, Devondre pointing and being like, you, you, you get it, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, all right, just we're good. It's not like screaming and clapping like, hey, dummy. You know what I mean? And ultimately, they're they're singled up on Rashawn. And then it's double team Kenny, double team Jaron Reed. Just just running, just creating ideally some massive gaps to run through. The one thing that that is somewhat of a negative on this, and I'm not going to call it a negative, it's a positive play. Great job, especially by Kenny, to kind of try to hold up that double team. Rashawn does a good job holding the edge. The one thing that I don't necessarily like is that there's two clear gaps to run through. I shouldn't, you know what? I shouldn't even say that. That's not true. I don't know the exact gap assignments, but it feels to me as though there's two gaps to the inside that the linebackers are accountable for. As far as the outside, you got Savage, you got Stokes, you got guys that can take care of them. I wish that for those two gaps, you had two linebackers that would just shoot through them, rather than kind of waiting to see where he decides to go and then reacting after the fact. It ends up being fine. As soon as he makes his decision, Campbell jumps into the gap with him and brings him down. It's just a three-yard game. But I'm just saying, you know, I mean, it's it's right there. Campbell's worried about, well, what if he goes through that? Quay Walker's right there. Let Quay deal with it if he goes that way. You go the other way. But again, I don't know what the job is, and he ends up doing the job anyway. So, and Quay Walker actually does a good job too because Devondre jumps in the gap and starts kind of losing it a little. Bit. The the one of the guys running a double team tries to get it up to the next level to block Quay Walker. Quay slips that, and remember he didn't even run through that gap that Quay's in. He slips past the blocker, runs over to where the running back is, helps Devondre to stop. I mean, just completely stops dead in his track the forward momentum and pushes him backwards. So. Devondre's there to make the tackle, but that's probably closer to a five or six yard gain rather than a three yard gain, if not for Quay. So I'm going to give him some credit for that too. So Kenny, Devondre, and Quay. And by the way, Devondre is uh, well. We'll do it. We'll do a summary in a little bit. But he's already up to four, um, which you know Devondre was the highest graded player on the team. You can kind of see that already. But it's third and three. Next pass is an incompletion, which sets up the field goal. Stokes is in tight coverage, so I'm just going to give Stokes credit for that. Not sure how catchable it was, but it doesn't matter. Stokes was in the guy's chest. So we got one more series here from the Green Bay Packers, uh, and then we got pretty much the end of the quarter. So we'll run through that, and then we'll do a summary of the grades, and we'll take a break. First play right out of the gate is probably the most controversial play that you'll find on social media. It, it, it's the play in which Romeo is running, we'll call it open down the field. Rodgers throws it way to the right, and the the conversation is, did Romeo run the wrong route? Did Rodgers throw in the wrong direction? Whatever. Um, according to what I've seen, Matt LaFleur has come out and said that Romeo Dobbs ran the correct route. I know Dusty Evely was on Twitter essentially trying to un- help us to understand what that means. And what it sounds like it means is because of the pressure that was there, and no, it wasn't the offensive line. It, it's kind of it's kind of confusing. Essentially, it was supposed to be like a half a boot. In other words, like you kind of boot out a little bit and you set your feet and then you throw to Romeo Dobbs. But Mercedes Lewis was kind of getting beat off the edge, so he has to kind of like boot around him and kind of go way out to that side. And as a result, he didn't want to throw all the way across his body to Romeo Dobbs, was hoping that Romeo would recognize that and fly to the other side. He didn't, so Rodgers just threw it out to where he wanted him to be, but he wasn't. I, I, I don't understand a lot of that. First of all, I feel as though he could have thrown a, a completion. To Dobbs. Let, let's start with that. Now, I understand there's a, there's, I mean, if you grab a screen capture, it's going to look worse than it is. There is a guy screaming down the field. As I said yesterday or whatever, he's, he's got, call it five yards, 10, it's, it's 10 to 15 yards of, of distance. Now, if he continues on that trajectory, maybe it gets picked off, but if he throws it just kind of straight down the field and lets him run to go get it, I feel like that could be a completion. 
I don't ultimately understand throwing it to where you want him to be, other than that is your way of communicating, hey, you idiot, you're supposed to be over there. Here's the bigger issue, though. Lazard is open. And I haven't seen anybody really talk about that, but Lazard is open. And again, Rodgers is just stuck on this is where I want to go. And so I get it. I want to go to Dobbs. This is the right call. That's the right guy. He's going to be open. And so I look to him, but he's not running where I want him to run, even though he is running the right route. Okay, so let's let's just stop there, right? What is the, what what options do you have? You've got a little bit of time. There are some guys coming, but you got a little bit of time. You can throw it to a random part of the field, or you can drop your eyes and see if Lazard happens to be open where he is. I mean, again, you are a big brain quarterback. You've done this for 400 years. You know the route. You understand where everybody's supposed to be. You know that guys are closing in on you, so there's probably a good a good chance to throw to that guy over to the sideline who's 15 yards away from you, pretty much right in front of your face. Drop your eyes and see if he's open and throw him the pass. But instead, he says, screw this and just chucks it down the field. I, I don't get it. I, I just, I can't help but feel when I watch Rodgers like he panics a lot. He is constantly panicked. He doesn't feel comfortable. And you can try to blame the offensive line if you want, but it's not an offensive line issue. There's, I mean, he's standing in the middle of the field by himself. There's nobody there. And yeah, there, there was that pressure or whatever, but it basically it just meant that there was a guy standing where he wanted to run to, so he had to run a little bit further out. It wasn't like there was a guy there that freaked him out, like, oh, run, throw, freaking out. No, he, he, he ran around him. He's, got, he's out in space. He's got time. It just feels like if he would just slow down, just assess in your brain, like, all right, I, I don't have to throw it now. I've got 1.5, two seconds. I have time to go to my next read, which he never does. He's looking at one guy the entire time, never bothers to look at anybody else, one of which, again, is wide open. And by the way, and, and Lazard is at the 30-yard line, so that would be a five-yard completion, but there's a very good chance, based on where the defenders are, that that ends up going for about a first down. But he chucks it to a random part of the field, which doesn't make sense. Because you can still, I mean, you're throwing it away, right? That's what you're doing. Unless you actually think that Dobbs is going to see this turn around and go grab it, which, I mean, if that was the case, throw it closer to where Dobbs is, which is what I think you could have done and should have done, and then he could have gotten there and it could have been a reception, but that's, I don't know what you're doing. I don't get it. I, I have no idea what the point of that is. Unless it was just the most inaccurate throw in the history of the universe where it was about 20 yards off. I don't know. But at the very least, I'm Doc and Roger. Because even if the guy that you want to be open isn't, I mean, he is open, but he's not exactly standing where you want him to stand. Look at the other guy who's right there. Just throw it to him. (laughs) Again, Lazard is, and the the frustration from the wide receivers has to be insane, especially when they go back and have to see social media be like, these idiot wide receivers can't separate. They're never open. Every play I'm seeing guys with hands waving. Hey, 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 I'm here, I'm here. Lazard is standing completely by himself. He's got his hands out in like the catch position, like throw it to me. The ball gets launched. He drops his hands, looks over that direction, and sees the ball go to where nobody is standing. Like, what, what, how annoying is that if you're the wide receiver? I'm open. I ran my route. I'm supposed to run over here. I ran. There's nobody here. I'm wide open, and you threw the ball away? Why did you throw the ball away? I'm open. And this is not one of those questionable, like, well, technically there's a guy bearing down, technically this, technically that. He's wide open, wide, wide open. For about a half a second, there's a guy that's kind of covering him, but he keeps drifting backwards because he's freaked out about Rodgers kind of rolling out, you know, because he's worried somebody's going to come up behind him. So he's got to kind of drift back a little bit as he's watching Lazard, but he's open. But anyways, I don't know, maybe Rodgers clarified it a little bit, but it, it, it doesn't matter. He's getting docked for that. By the way, anybody else watch that and see the ball just kind of flutter around? Maybe it's just the, the it's not a very clear picture, but it looks like it's kind of wobbling all over the place. I'm just wondering if it came out of his hand weird, I guess is what I'm wondering. If we are saying maybe the placement isn't exactly what he wanted, I wonder if it just kind of came out weird. Anyways, on top of that whole disaster, Yash Nyman actually gets an offensive holding. So, you know, again, this is sort of that death spiral. As soon as you see this and as soon as you see that you're, you know, it's, it's first and 20 from the 15, it's like... W- the odds of, of not punting here drop to like 10%. Probably less based on what we've seen from the Packers so far this year. It drops to like 5%. Like you just know that just killed the entire drive. So yes, Yash gets his, his second bad note of the day. Anyways, they end up dr- running a draw play. It's hard to call it a negative when it's seven yards, but the blocking downfield, I mean, it, it, it's there enough to be able to get the seven yard. Again, you're kind of just getting in the way, which is great. But um, Tyler Davis and Josh Myers are kind of just letting these guys free. 
Dylan doesn't really have anywhere to go. Kind of wish Dylan would have cut around behind the other way. It's just that that split second recognition of he's losing the block. That guy's going to come inside, so I'm going to go to the outside. I know I'm supposed to go there, but you know I'll just I'll just go the other way. I'll I'll go from my my offensive lineman is blocking the wrong direction to now he's suddenly blocking the right direction because I'm going to run around behind him. You always should be running behind their back either way. So if they're the wrong way, just go the other way. I don't know. I'll leave it alone. I'm not going to do anything positive or negative because it's it's seven yards, which is great, but I don't know. There's nothing special about that. Again, we're just going to line up and put four wide and try to run a wide receiver screen. Looks like it hits Dobbs in the chest and just bounces off. So, you know. I do have to add him to the list, though, which means he he didn't get a single negative last week, which is interesting. Anyways, it is now third and 13. Throws a pass to Aaron Jones for seven yards. Pass is absolutely horrific. Instead of catching him in stride, Rogers or Aaron Jones has to make a just ridiculous spinning back shoulder way over his head catch. Somehow s- spins down like a ballerina, landing and gets his balance and is able to kind of move up the field. Does actually a pretty incredible job of making guys miss. I don't know. Um, Rogers is going to get a bad one. I'll give Jones a good one. The blocking, I guess, was fine. I mean, as far as the play design, I don't know if that's really very often going to go for 13 yards no matter what. So... Rodgers bad, Jones good. Anyways, quick recap. We'll take a break. Rodgers leads the team. Again, Rodgers is probably going to have the most positive and negative, but still, Rodgers leads the team. He has three negatives, uh, Lazard and Yash Nyman with two. Otherwise, Jaron Reed, Josh Myers, Mercedes Lewis, Robert Tunyon, Tyler Davis, and Romeo Dobbs, each with one negative so far. Not the end of the world. Positives, certainly more positives. Lazard with four. Devondre Campbell with four. Uh, Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, Kenny Clark, and Rashawn Gary with three. Darnell Savage, Elton Jenkins, Jair, Josh Myers, Mercedes Lewis, Quay Walker, Razul Douglas, Yash Nyman, Zach Tom with two. There's always more positive. Dean Lowry, Eric Stokes, John Runyon, Josiah DeGuara, and uh, Romeo Dobbs, TJ Slayton, Tyler Davis, all with one positive so far. Patreon.com forward slash back underscore daddy. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so for as little as $1 per month. Thank you so much to Takasu and Jason for supporting me uh, this October. Also, FertileGroundRanch.org. If you'd like to support that ministry, that would be greatly appreciated. You can check it out at FertileGroundRanch.org. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, us days what's us days it means exclusive offers just for their customers just to say thanks like up to twelve hundred dollars to upgrade to any new phone no i didn't just misread that that's up to twelve hundred dollars off they must really like you us days at u.s cellular exclusive offers just for you just to say thanks right now u.s cellular customers get up to twelve hundred dollars to upgrade to any new phone terms apply all right, you crazy bunch of jerks. Let's uh, do the second uh, quarter here. Packers punting, and, uh, you know, well, you know how it goes. I tell you what, th- there are several guys, and I know special teams is... Th- th- here's the thing. Special teams is still a problem, and that's not even debatable. But the difference is, last year there was nothing redeemable about special teams. This year, it's a combination of a couple guys are really freaking good and there's a lot of things that are awesome and then there's a couple things that are just an absolute disaster and if we could just do away with one we'd have a great special teams unit but um nixon that boy good man 
he is showing up on special teams along with Ford and Levitt and those those guys. But anywho, start of the second quarter, we get a 14-yard pass from Tyler Heineke to Curtis Samuel. Sorry, skipped one, four-yard run first. I can't really give positive or negative on this, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just always kind of amazed by Kenny. I'm not going to give him a positive because he didn't necessarily do anything, but I mean, just the, the effort and the intelligence to know exactly what's going on and to put himself where he needs to be is, is shocking. I'm going to leave this gradeless. It's kind of a, you know, four yards, we'll just call it even. But uh, I'm so glad he's a Packer. So the 14-yard pass, that is all Razul. Looks like it's man coverage straight across the board. Runs a curl route. Razul just keeps on running. Good, good timing route. I mean, the ball's out as soon as he comes out of his break. So, uh, But Razul is just, he's, he flies right by him. So that was a disaster. Also, I forgot about this. You may remember this is the play where Razul does the most half-hearted tackle attempt in the world where he just kind of puts his two hands on him and stops. I really want to give him two X's on this play, but I, I don't do that. But he kind of did mess up twice on one play. He gave it up, and then he's like, now nah, let somebody else tackle him. You know, and, and I, I know I need to speed this up because we should be about done by now. But this, this is a clear difference. I've just been telling you I love the effort. I love everything, especially of Razul Douglas. The, the intensity of Razul, and it, that's different. What, what did I just watch? That's a different Razul Douglas. Did it go to like the end of the quarter, they went to the sideline, and they found out like the, the team pet died? Because for some reason, that was just BS. Like, wh- what, are you, what happened there? Where's the Razul Douglas of the first quarter? Where'd that guy go? But first and ten, Quay Walker, this is one of the plays, probably one of the first plays that they've done this. Quay Walker, they're bringing around the edge. Which is awesome because they just they're not expecting it. Rashawn Gary comes to the inside, which he usually doesn't do. He likes to either just bull rush directly into the quarterback or kind of get around to the outside. But the tackle, I mean, it works perfectly. The tackle, you know, goes with him. Quay comes free around the outside, gets right in the quarterback's face. And as a result, uh, I mean, he gets hit right as he's throwing the ball sails just outside of where the intended target was, and there was space there. So that's all Quay Walker. Now, granted, that probably doesn't work if Rashawn doesn't do his job and everything, but I'm, 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 we're going with Quay on that. So in complete second and 10, they run a, a five-yard run play. They actually, it's a pretty good design because it looks like the Packers are in man coverage. So they have two running backs. They send one. That draws Devondre Campbell way out to the other side. They run the other direction. So Quay is the lone man. Preston has the edge. Kind of looks like they wanted to run to the inside, but I don't think that was ever going to work because Quay was unaccounted for and, and Kenny just completely shut that down. I don't know. Either way, they end up, uh, he bounces it to the outside. Quay tries to get on his horse and get to him, but can't quite do it. But Amos comes in and blows it up. Not sure if I should give credit to Kenny because I don't know if that was ever the intention. Um, and I can't quite give it to Quay. I, I technically don't need to give it to anybody because it was a five-yard run, but I am going to give it to a- Amos because that was some incredible hustle and a great tackle. And then the next play was the play of the day. And, and, and it's important to kind of point this out because, again, after the fumble, a lot of people said that was when the team kind of fell apart. The defense immediately after that had to defend the team on the 17-yard line and they held them to a field goal. The defense now comes out, and although it hasn't been great, what happens? Pick six. You're starting to see a little bit, you know, again, Razul, not quite there on a play, but you're still seeing the aggression, you're still seeing the communication. And I tell you what, the guy that doesn't get enough credit for that is Rashawn Gary, who actually hit him in the arm as he was throwing this pass, which maybe had to do with the placement of the ball being where Devondre could get it. But Rashawn Gary just absolutely annihilates the guy around the edge, barely gets touched, gets his arm up and smacks his arm right as he's... I mean, there's, there's other guys in there. I think that might be Kenny is right in the quarterback's face. But again, they're still fighting. So Rashawn and Devondre, obviously, and I'm tempted to give Kenny some credit on this too. There's been too many times where he's done a good job and I haven't given him credit because it's not quite there. But uh, when the guard is stepping on the shoes of the quarterback, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and round up and give him one, especially when the result of the play is a pick six. Devondre, by the way, the first, first player to five positive plays. So um, kickoff, Washington gets a penalty, so Washington's kind of backed up now. First play is a run play, and I tell you what, the the offensive line for Washington's having a hard time really... Ex- I know it sounds weird because it seems like they ran the ball well against us, but up to this point, the designed hole that they're trying to get through is almost never there. Never. I don't know if it's been there one time. And it's the same thing here. What they're going to try to do, Slayton is head up on the, the center. The center is going to try to get to the left side so that they're, they're moving to the right. They're trying to get to the, to the offense's right side of Slayton, and the left guard's going to come over and help. And essentially, they're going to try to pass him down. 
And as they pass him along down the other way and the left guard's able to take Slayton, the center will get up and take the linebacker and that'll create the lane because we're going to take Dean out with our right guard. Slayton just walks him straight down. The guard can never get there. He's never able to pass him on. And so that lane just never develops. And unfortunately, Devontae Wyatt is just not quite fast enough because the cutback is there. He does a good job. I mean, he tries to get behind and, and use his speed, but one of the, the offensive linemen is, just gives him a push just enough to kind of knock him off court. So there's enough room for him to uh, bounce it back outside, and there's a cutback lane there. But um, ended up just being a two-yard run, and I'm giving the credit on that one to uh, Slayton, who's been showing up quite a bit, kind of flying under the radar, but I've seen him several times, especially in run defense, just dominate. Next play is a screen to the running back, ends up going for seven yards. I think that is the fault of Quay. Usually, especially since it's to his side, if there's a running back back there, he needs to be accountable for that guy. He kind of bites on the eye candy, seems like he kind of forgets he's back there. And then after the play, Quay is pretty upset, you can tell. I mean, granted, anybody be upset about giving up a play, but I, I think that that was his fault. I will say, though, and this is a screen grabbable, the fact that Devontae Wyatt the defensive tackle caught him from behind is even more shocking than you would expect having watched it live on TV. Because not only did Wyatt go from the defensive line, and we're talking, he was at about the, let's call it the 13-yard line, past the left hash, or right hash, I guess, I don't know, opposite side of the play. The ball was caught at the 15-yard line, halfway between the hash marks and the left sideline. The fact that Wyatt could get there is so stupid. And, and just the hustle, I mean, it's one of those things, too, where it's like, it's not worth it. I can't catch him. And that's true, but you know what happens sometimes? People get in the way, they start doing that little juking and jive and stuff, where they're starting to, like, you know, things happen. That's why you just, you hustle in that direction. And a lot of times you'll get rewarded, and he did. He came from the complete opposite side of the field. There were seven out of 11 Packers were closer than Devontae Wyatt, and Wyatt hustled down there, and he lit him up. He killed that guy. So I'm going to say that's a negative for Quay, and I'm giving to want Devontae Wyatt credit for that because that is insane hustle. And you want to talk about guys that have heart and passion and are fighting to the end? That's insane that he's the guy that made that play. I kept watching the wrong guy because I, I assumed it was the guy that was on that side of the field. I'm like, where, where did that other guy come from? I don't understand. Wyatt was the right defensive tackle toward the side of the play, but he ends up looping around to the other side. He's so far away, it's ridiculous. But alas, it's third and one. They end up getting a four-yard run here. And honestly, if I got to put it on somebody, it might even be Kenny, which feels weird to say. It's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous that I. This is how how you know grades. Not that I'm necessarily grading, but this is how grades can end up being biased. Where if it's anybody else, it's a real easy like, oh yeah, that's for sure his fault. But because it's Kenny, it's like, eh, maybe you're supposed to lose a couple yards there. <laughs> I don't know. Probably probably not Kenny's fault. But he end, he did lose a little bit of ground. He lost a little bit of uh, a few yards. A running back ran right behind. Him. I mean, it, it wasn't terrible, but it was enough. He needed one yard. He snuck through for four. Wasn't the biggest mistake in the world, but alas, Kenny was the one. And it was a one-on-one, -on -one, which is rare. I mean, he, he very rarely gives up yardage. You know, he, he doesn't move on a double team. One-on-one, -on -one, it's pretty rare to see somebody push him back a couple yards. And what's actually shocking, Kenny had the most positives, on the I think, on the entire team or aside from Rodgers last year. He didn't have a single negative last week, which is crazy. Next play, again, we get, you know, I, I was getting on Razul, like, where is that guy? Exact same thing. He re He's way off. You know, on purpose, that's the design. He's, he's 10 yards off the guy, and he reads the play. He jumps the rock. I mean, it sounds like they're really trying to do that. They're playing him off, and he's reading it, and he's waiting, just baiting him into it, and he just misses it again. He jumps the rock, gets his hand on the ball, and cannot bring it in. I'll give him credit for the pass breakup. But again, I mean, th these things end up being critical. As I'm watching it, not realizing we're going to lose the game, I'm like, hey, it's still a pass breakup. A pick would have been nice, but I mean, you're always happy with a pass breakup. But you look at it now, especially since this ends in a touchdown, and you say you needed that to be a pick. It has to be. These are these are small things. So I'm, I'm going to call that a positive because he did break up the pass. But you can see where those things do make a big difference. Next play is a 20-yard run around the outside. This is where Rashawn starts losing the edge like constantly. Um, I mean, he actually has it, but he tries to get cute, and um, he thinks that he's about to bounce it to the inside, so he wants to go to the inside. This is where you just got to worry about your own job and not worry about everybody else and about being a playmaker, right? He's, he's going inside. I'm going to go get him. No, your job is to hold the edge, man. That's what you do. He tries to cut it back inside, and that's when things go real south. and he, south, Yeah, real south, I guess, and bounces it. Could maybe 
ding Stokes if you wanted to, but eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to put that on Rashawn for not being able to hold the edge. Next play is a three-yard run, and it's one of my favorite plays of the entire game because Quay Walker did exactly what I've been asking him to do this whole game. So to, to try to paint this picture, we're just going to look at the offensive side of things. They're running to the offense's right side. Devondre Campbell, according to the offense, is on the right side. Quay is on the left side, so he's away from where we're running. As they block this, one of the guys, a tight end, gets up to block Devondre. The left or the right guard helps double team, and then he's going to release and go up to Quay. But for a split second, there's a gap there, and there's nobody blocking Quay Walker. Now, last week or any week prior to this week, when we're talking Quay Walker, he's going to stand there and let that guy get up to him and block him. In this particular instance, he sees that gap there, and he sprints for it. The offensive lineman does try to get off, but Quay is coming with such a full head of steam, and he actually dives. He hits that poor offensive lineman right in his freaking hip bone. I'm surprised it didn't get shattered. You can see it, because I'm watching from the, the rear of the, the offensive lineman. I can see the shock wave ripple through this poor offensive lineman as he dives through him to make a tackle. And he actually does such a good job, because he goes to the... He, he knifes past the offensive line, wraps around the running back, and actually grabs on and swings his whole body around, still holding on and dragging him down. Fantastic effort. And, and you got to understand, if he doesn't do this, this is a big play. This ends up being a three-yard run. If he stands there and allows the offensive lineman to get up to that next level, he's the last line of defense until the safeties. And Devondre just got completely washed out by the tight end, number 85. There is nobody. Everybody's blocked. Jaron Reed is blocked. Preston does kind of come back a little bit, but I don't think he's going to be able to do, be able to get there in time. This, this is a really, really, really big play if Quay isn't fast, decisive, and aggressive and shoots through that gap and says, you know what, if he bounces and goes somewhere else, that's somebody else's job. This is my job. This is my assignment. I'm going through that hole and I'm going to hit him. And he does. And again, instead of it being a, a, a 10, 15-yard run, it's three. Love this play so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Quay Walker. And again, this is an encouraging game. Just in terms of things that I haven't seen, I'm seeing. I've never seen Razul do what he's doing. I've never seen Quay do what he's doing. The offensive line, I've never seen do what it's doing. Not, not just the fact that they're keeping Rodgers clean, but just the synchronicity of the blocking and the timing of everything. It just, things are working. There's still way too many mistakes, as Roger said, with the mental errors of the drops and the throwing and, you know, Rashawn deciding to, to making a split second decision to jump inside to make a tackle instead of staying outside and, and holding the edge. It's, it's all these micro decisions that are absolutely crushing us, but still underneath all of that, they're still growing. I'm not trying to get you all excited that we're going to beat Buffalo or anything. I'm just saying it's exciting to see. Next play, they run a screen, and again, it's one of those things where I know somebody did something wrong, but I'm struggling to figure out exactly who that would be. It's just a well-executed screen. You know, sometimes you watch plays, and, and the other team just, just, they just run a good play. If I got to put it on somebody, though, it's Devondre. I think he maybe could have had an opportunity, but you're talking a linebacker trying to go get a running back in space with two offensive linemen out in space block, and he tried to do it, but he tries to get around the offensive line but the running back sees that, cuts back inside. Exact same thing with, I can't even tell who that is. I think it's Razul. He, he, he tries to go get him. There's a blocker there. Running back just runs around the other side of the blocker, and he's kind of kind of running. Kenny gets on his horse and chases him from behind. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to leave it because I don't know. It's probably Devondre, but I, I, can't, I can't say, why don't you tackle him? You know, beat two offensive linemen blockers and make a tackle. I'm just going to leave it. Next play is a six-yard pass to Terry McLaurin. He just comes running across the uh, middle of the field. It's, it's, it's nearly an impossible task to ask a running back who's standing still to get on his horse and start sprinting to the sideline and keep up with a guy like Terry McLaurin. But that is what we asked our guys to do, and they couldn't do it. I don't know if I want to dock Quay Walker on it. He did seem a tad hesitant, and he was also a little slow making that decision. If you see it coming sooner, recognize and start running, you can get the quarterback to come off of that. But uh, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put that one on Quay. It's a tough it's a tough assignment, and sometimes it's a little unfair. I do that with offensive linemen trying to get the linebackers in impossible positions. But ultimately, that was your job. Again, a big run to the outside, 24 yards. Again, Rashawn struggles to hold the edge. Turns around, chases him down, isn't able to make a tackle. Adrian Amos, same thing. He's in a position, can't make a tackle. Eric Stokes goes head to head with him. Seems like both of these guys are trying to go for the ball. 
Uh, neither of them make a tackle. You got Stokes and Amos wrapped around the guy. He's still running for 10 more yards. Keeps going until he hits Savage. Now we got three guys. He gets another three, four yards. So, I mean, Rashawn, Amos, I, I'm probably going to have to put it on Stokes too. I mean, you know, somebody's got to just pop this guy and stop him from moving, and nobody could do it. And again, this is one of those minor things where just, just a tiny bit more fire, you know, a little bit more intensity. Dig in your heels, drop your shoulder, and drive through him. Instead of, you know, running alongside of him and try to punch the ball out and then, you know, jump on his back and go for a piggyback ride. Come on now. Kill that man. So now it's first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Preston just makes an unbelievable play. This is very well blocked. Devondre would have been the guy to have to come up and make a play. He was the one in that gap, and uh, I don't think he would have made the play. But Preston's able to bend the corner and, and, and catch the, uh, the running back Robinson's heels and bring him down. And again, this, this is, again, we're talking about those inches. Way too often, those inches are not going in our favor. This is that little bit of extra oomph and a little bit of extra effort, and Preston brings the guy down for a two-yard run instead of potentially a touchdown. Yeah, I don't think it would have been a touchdown, but still, Devondre would not have been able to make that play. So fantastic play by Preston. Next play, they're passing. It's uh, now second and eight from the nine-yard line. Passing right in the middle of the field. Unbelievable job by Quay Walk. He's basically the, the receiver standing right in front of Devondre Camp. He does a stutter step to the right and then starts running to the left. Devondre kind of gets his ankles broken a little bit. He's out of position. Quay just starts sprinting in that direction. Gets there just as soon as the ball does. Kind of trying to decide between getting a pick and just tackling the guy. Goes for a little bit of both and ends up breaking the pass up. But you could see him beating himself up on that one, not getting the pick. And, and again, as much as you want to be like, hey, dude, that's fine. That was a great play. That's two times on this one drive that that ball should have been in our hands could have been in our hands and instead as I said the very next play ends up being a touchdown so I'm sitting here celebrating Quay great play and it's not an easy pick but he knows it it was right there by the way Quay now has five positive plays he's tied with Devondre Campbell for five so the two linebackers as we kind of noted playing really uh, aggressively and, and just doing a great job in this game they are the two highest graded players in the entire team right now or highest impact I guess you would say not really graded Next play is a touchdown pass again. There's some, I guess, confusion about who's to blame on this. And, and, you know, maybe Savage was out of position. But the one thing I know for sure is that Stokes and Amos both ran after one guy while the other guy comes completely free. And it was Stokes that went, oh, crap, and turned around and ran the other way for a touchdown. And again, regardless of what Savage is supposed to do, you know, he should have been there a little quicker or whatever. If Stokes recognizes this and just turns and runs with the guy, the quarterback's not going to pull the trigger and throw that direction. Not only do you have Stokes running with him, but you have a safety over the top and a linebacker just in front of that. That's not a pass he's going to want to throw. So I don't know definitively how much of a better job uh, Savage was supposed to do, but I do know definitively that Savage messed up on this play. So I will give him a negative mark on that touchdown. All right, Packers get the ball, and it is a complete disaster. First play, Aaron Jones loses six yards. It's clearly a miscommunication on along the offensive line because Elton Jenkins and Josh Myers, our left guard and center, both just immediately run up to the next level. Generally, you might have one guy do that. You know, it's it's either one or the other. Either everybody kind of blocks somebody, and, and, and in one case, there's like a double team, and then after that double team, one of the guys will try to release and get up to the next level. Sometimes it, we just do one-on-one, and one of the guys, like Josh Myers or Elton Jenkins, immediately gets up to that next level. So Zach Tom is getting the guy on the edge. Allen is coming down. Josh Myers is going up to the next level, immediately gunning for the linebacker. I don't know what Elton Jenkins is doing. It seems to me like he wanted to get up to that linebacker as well. And I just have to assume that this is on Elton Jenkins because the ability of Josh Myers without the help of Elton Jenkins in some kind of a double team is never going to be able to reach across Jonathan Allen. That's never going to happen. This play is impossible if Elton Jenkins just abandons, uh, abandons Jonathan Allen. So I think Elton just completely botched what he was supposed to do here, and um, that's that's my assessment of the situation. Next play, another penalty on Yash Nyman. So we go back again, setting up a second and 25 after just losing six. Next play is an incompletion to Robert Tunyon, and it's tough because it's a way off target pass, but I don't know whether it was because Elton ran the wrong, you know, he, he was supposed to stop and kept running, or whether it was Rodgers throwing a bad pass, but... I can surmise, based on where the defenders are, that it's probably going to be on Robert Tunyon, because Rodgers threw it right in between where the two defenders are, and Tunyon's trying to run directly into a guy. 
So I think Tunyon kept running when he should have stopped. So I'm going to say that that was on Tunyon. Whereas, again, having watched that live, I would have said, Rogers, what the heck are you doing, stupid? So that sets up third and 25, and we get another incomplete pass, this time intended for Aaron Jones. This pass is just swung out into the flat, and Jones just flat out drops it. Probably not the most accurate pass in the world, but it's certainly, I mean, it's not, it's not as bad as the last time Aaron Rodgers, or Aaron, yeah, Aaron Rodgers threw to Aaron Jones, where it's like sailing way over his head. This one just kind of was like a rocket ball at his eyes, you know? It's a weird spot to throw the ball, but that's, I mean, 100% you got to catch that. So that's a negative for Aaron Jones, and I have to make a new category because uh, I don't have any negatives for Aaron Jones. And and again, I'm not, I don't want to make excuses for the defense because they just gave up a long, you know, get get yourself off the field to be the first thing that you can do. But through this point, the defense has had one bad series, right? It was like basically a three and out. Then they had pretty good field position and ended up getting a field goal. Then it was a pick six. Then was their bad drive that they gave up. And again, they, they have been on the field a long time. There was There was the long series in which they got their field goal. Then the Packers went off the field almost immediately with like a, I don't know, six and out. Then they run a couple plays and get a pick six. Then they got to go back on the field. Then they have a really long drive again, this time for a touchdown. Then the Packers have the ball for about three plays and have to punt. And now the Packers are back on the field. And again, it's in terrible territory. Starting at the Packers 43-yard line, the the defense has to go back out there. They've been out there the whole game again. But um, anyways... First play for Washington at the 43-yard line, throwing a little wide receiver screen. Good play by Stokes, and especially Quay. Stokes fires to go get the guy. Can't quite bring him down. I appreciate the aggression of it, the decisiveness of it, and he slows him down just enough for Quay to come in and make a play. And I especially like what Stokes did because, remember, they, they, they've got, they got two blockers out there. One blocker's trying to get Stokes. One blocker's trying to stop Quay. But Stokes is so fast in recognizing this, he gets there before the blocker can get to him. That's pretty pivotal. Quay ends up beating the other blocker so that while Stokes is slowing him down, wrapping him up, trying to bring him down, Quay's able to come in and pop the guy, and they get one yard on that. A little bit of an assist from Razul Douglas as well, but I'm just going to give it to the first two guys. By the way, Quay Walker now, the first player to have six positive plays on the entire team, offense or defense. Next play is run up the middle. There's a pretty simple. There's a gap there. Nobody even tries to get up to the next level and block. So Quay's just got a one-on-one. I will say, again, it would be nice if he'd be a little bit more aggressive. This could have been like a one-yard gain instead of a three-yard gain, but he runs into Quay. Quay brings him down. Three-yard gain. I'll take that. And yes, I'm going to call that a positive play for Quay Walker again. And then one of the worst plays of the entire game, uh, Tyler Heineke scrambles, forced to fumble. Rashawn Gary forced to fumble, recovered by Razul Douglas for a, uh, geez, what a 62-yard touchdown return. However, Illegal contact penalty on Eric Stokes brings the whole thing back. I know a lot of Packer fans are upset saying it's not illegal contact. As far as I'm concerned, that is what illegal contact is. As much as it may be stupid, that's what it is. So um, I'm just going to put a negative play for Razul Douglas. I could give some credit to Rashawn, but he caught him like, I don't know, 8, 10 yards down the field. So that would have been a pretty big play if he didn't just fumble that. So I'm, I'm just going to leave all that alone and dock Stokes. By the way, to this point, only three negative plays. Uh, three is the most, but uh, Eric Stokes is one of them. Rodgers, Stokes, and Nyman with three. Anyways, that penalty not only erases a touchdown for the Packers, but gives them a first down on the Green Bay 34-yard line, first and 10. Once again, they're trying to run. They get a three-yard run on this play on first and 10. They, they have a designed area that they want to run. Dean Lowry doesn't let them do it. He pushes his, he just grab. They keep grabbing the offensive lineman and just pushing them toward where the hole is and closing it. And so he has to bounce it to the outside. And who makes the tackle? Dean Lowry. He not only shut that thing down, but then he disengages from his blocker and goes up and gets a great play by Dean. And then the next play is my absolute favorite play by Quay Walker. Um, they they ran a very similar thing. They put one of the running backs, I think it's Antonio Gibson, in motion. That draws Devondre Campbell out in space. So Quay Walker's the lone guy. Here's the really scary part, though. They blitzed Quay off the edge, meaning they took away one of our linebackers and we took away the other one by blitzing. And I'm actually surprised there wasn't some kind of a check there where Devondre, when he has to go in motion, like, hey, scrap that, dude. We can't blitz the other linebacker and have none. Now, the good news is Rashawn Gary did a pretty good job of being able to disengage. He probably could have made a play, but the bottom line is Quay Walker blitzes her off the edge 
and is able to bend around the corner enough to grab his legs and bring him down. Absolutely love that play by Quay Walker. He is now two positive plays ahead of everybody else. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're just talking the first half. I think the, what, did, what is the most anybody had in the entire last week? Rodgers had the most with 11. Or sorry, he had 13. Kenny Clark had the most for a non-quarterback with 11. Quay has eight so far already through this game, not even halfway through the game. That brings up third and five. They're going to end up going for a pass that falls incomplete. It's not a great pass, but uh, Razul Douglas is right there to break it up and does a fantastic job doing that. So they set up for a field goal and miss. So again, we're we're talking almost halftime now. Defense is still in. Remember, they started in Green Bay territory, and then they shut it down for a pretty long field goal that they ended up missing. Packers now get great field position, starting on the 32-yard line. And this is just a play that I I just don't understand. They're, They're throwing a quick... Again, Aaron Jones runs into the flat. He throws it to Aaron Jones, and there's a whole lot wrong with this. First of all, Rodgers is throwing to the wrong guy. There's a, it's a really weird play that seems like it's set up to go to Tunya. Aaron Jones is running into the flat, right? Robert Tunyon runs out to meet the slot corner, who's the one guy that's there to, to make a play. Fakes like he's going to block him, and then runs to an open zone 10 yards further down the field than where Aaron Jones is. So while Wild Goose is running toward Aaron Jones, that leaves Tunyon wide open. Rodgers says, eh, screw it, and throws to Aaron Jones anyways. By the way, this is, as many people have seen, Romeo Dobbs running wide open with his hand waving through the air. I, I don't really blame him because he's got two options to his left. He doesn't need to come off both of them and go to Romeo Dobbs. But again, the idea that nobody's open isn't necessarily true. By the way, I'm seeing somebody else scream open down the <laughs> field up there. I don't know. Maybe it's because the ball's already out. The defender quits. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is, for whatever reason, he decides to throw to Aaron Jones. He doesn't throw a very good ball. Maybe he does it because the defender's coming and he wants him to turn around, but whatever. Aaron Jones has to spin back inside rather than, you know, when you catch it and continue running down the sideline like you're supposed to. He has to turn back inside. As he does, that defender is right there to hit him, and we end up losing five yards on that. So again, I, I don't get it. First of all, why not just have Tunyon block? Unless it was intended to go to Tunyon. But if it's intended to go to Tunyon, why did Rodgers throw to Aaron Jones? It's, it's like it's a trick play intended to trick them and bait them into going to, for Aaron Jones so that you can throw to Tunyon, and then you throw it to Aaron Jones, the guy that you baited them into going to get. I, I don't understand. I can't help but to dock Rodgers for that. Even if the whole Tunyon thing is incorrect, which I don't think it is, it's still a bad ball. I think it's a bad decision and a bad ball. But again, for the I don't know how many times in a row now, um, it's a negative play for the offense, and we're from we're playing from behind the sticks again. Second and 16. Last time the Packers were on the field, they had a, a first and 20 because of the Yash Nyman penalty. Actually, no. <laughs> Hold on. I skipped one. This time, they're, they're starting at second and 15. The time before that, they had a second and 16, which turned into a second and 25. The time before that, there was a penalty that, that put them in first and 20. That's three drives in a row. They've gone backwards. Three in a row. And, and again, at this point, you're dead in the water. You're just dead. And I think that was Davis, not Wild Goose. I was looking at the wrong one before. That was Wild Goose, I think. Oh, boy. So next play, I've got three problems with this play. Well, four problems with this play. Several people running routes, as you can imagine. You've got um, Watkins and Dobbs running deep down the field on either side of the field. Lazard is coming across the middle of the field, sort of deep, uh, intermediate middle. And then you have Tunyon and Aaron Jones kind of on the shorter portion of the field. Short, sideline-y area. Okay? First issue, Dobbs is open. He doesn't throw to him. Deep down the field. Open. Second issue, Sammy Watkins is open. Now, this is tricky because there is a safety over there. I I think it's still one of those throws that if Rodgers wanted to go to him, he'd go to him because he'd beat him to the corner of the field. You know, he'd throw to the sideline, and I think Sammy gets there before the safety gets there. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It's hard to tell because the ball's out, and so that safety's he's not chasing Watkins. But as far as I can tell, he seems to be open. Third issue, Lazard is not open. There's actually five issues. Fourth issue, he decides to throw to Lazard, who is not open. Fifth issue, it's a badly thrown ball. So this is where a lot of people look at it and say, these guys can't get open. No, it's not these guys. It's Alan Lazard on this one play, and the reason it looks like nobody's open is because Rodgers isn't throwing 
to the open guys. Without question, Romeo Dobbs is open. He is sprinting beyond the 50-yard line. And again, I know that there's safeties there, but you can beat the safety. But the decision to throw to Lazard was not great. Now, this ended in a penalty, so we get to continue to move forward. But again, this just this feels like Aaron Rodgers-style offense. There's no motion. This is very Mike McCarthy-esque. You send two guys deep down the field. You have Lazard cut across the middle, and it's wide open, right? Because Dobbs and Watkins are carrying the two corners down the field, and they're drawing the safeties away. So Lazard has one guy to beat in the wide open middle of the field. And as long as the timing is there, with his drop and everything else, he throws it right as he comes out of his break. There should be some separation. It's a, it's a perfectly drawn, indefensible play. This isn't Aaron Rodgers' play. Didn't work, because the, the pass sucked, the timing sucked, and Lazard didn't get open. I mean, to be honest, he was kind of a little bit open, maybe open enough, but the ball was way behind. This is Rodgers' stuff. This is not Lafleur's stuff. But again, hey, we bailed out by a penalty. That's going to happen a lot in this game, and as well as it did last game. First and 10, we throw a quick pass to Alan Lazard. There ends up being a penalty on Robert Tunyon, so I'm just going to go ahead and dock him. And again, where are we? After just bailing ourselves out of a second and 15 because of a penalty on them, which gives us a first and 10, the very th- first thing we do when we get into first and 10 is put ourselves into first and 20. First thing we do. Next play, again, quick out by Alan Lazard. Sammy Watkins is down the field blocking. Great job by everybody. Good throw by Rodgers. Good catch from Lazard. Uh, Watkins is blocking so that Lazard is able to go around behind him uh, and all that stuff. It ends up picking up eight yards. The problem is it was first and 19 instead of first and 10. So instead of second and two, it's now second and 11. So instead of just running the ball and picking it up real quick, we got a pass, 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 punt, which is what happens. But I'll go ahead and give the positives out. I've been forgetting about the offensive line, but to my knowledge, there really hasn't been any reason to do so. These have been a lot of quick passes, including this one. So we'll just when there's a positive play where Rodgers has to sit in the pocket, we'll reevaluate that. Next play is the one that Rodgers launches. I mean, I, I, when I watched it live, I was like, why did he gear down? I don't get it. Dude, this ball this ball is so far beyond where anybody... No, he geared down because this was like basically thrown away. This is 100% a terrible pass from Aaron Rodgers. You want to know something interesting too? Rodgers threw this ball... From the let's see, 31 two yard, 32 yard line. It landed at roughly the 15 yard line. So 32, Green Bay 32, Washington 15. He passed this ball 53 yards down the field. Let's just say, and I know he dropped back and all that stuff. So I, well, I'll figure out where the line of scrimmage is in a second. But this is 53 air yards. Let's just say we had a wide receiver that was faster, like uh, Christian Watson, and he was able to actually get all the way down the field. 53 air yards. You know how long it took him? Again, you, you, you need all this time to be able to, you know, the, the quick passing, you can only throw five-yard passes. 53 yards, you know how long he held the ball? 2.24 seconds. 2.24 seconds, he threw the ball 53 yards. You don't need three seconds for deep passing. 53 yards, it took him less than two and a half seconds from the time the ball was snapped to the time he threw the ball. Now, you probably can't do that if you're trying to get sub two seconds because you really don't trust the offensive line. You want to get it out in two instead of two and a half. That's fine. But what, what are we talking about then? 40-yard passes? You certainly can throw 20. 20 is considered a deep pass. You can throw 20-yard passes, no problem, in two seconds. So I'm just, just throwing that out there. But yeah, that was a terrible throw from Rodgers. And yes, Sammy did have him beat. So again, the whole, well, we need better wide receivers. Why? So that they can beat their guy on the outside. We have that guy. He just did it. Rodgers missed him. You want to bring somebody else in so Rodgers can miss him or what? How many different guys need to come in here so that they can run fast down the field, get open, and Rodgers either doesn't throw it or misses him? Again, how many plays have you heard me say, I don't know, Rodgers had nowhere to go with the ball? I'm pretty sure today it's been zero. I've said it, but it's rare, maybe maybe like two times last week and zero this week. By the way, this whole series has been Aaron Rodgers' plays, not Matt LaFleur plays. We've got three wide receivers lined up, one tight end, one running back, and I think he had probably two better options than the guy he threw to, but again, he knows who he's going to before this even begins. He, he looks at a guy, says he's got one-on-one matchup, and he expects him to win, and he kind of just doesn't. Romeo Dobbs, again, running the same garbage little in, in, dig, drag, whatever, just run in toward the middle of the field, and, and you're supposed to get some separation, and he just doesn't. But I'm going to force it in there anyways, and he doesn't throw a perfectly good ball. I mean, considering how tight the coverage is, it needs to be just where his outstretched hands can reach. It's not. He throws it kind of low and into his gut. 
and the defender's able to come in and punch the ball out. And everybody's looking at that going, oh, another drop. That ain't a drop, dude. I mean, if you're going to call that a drop, I don't know, man. That's a bad throw with a defender right there. And again, I don't, I don't really understand the point of this if, if he's really just, you know, the, what happened to route progressions? What happened to like, I'm going to start here and then go here and then go here? He's not doing that. He just, this is where I'm going and that's it. He's playing this game all based on trust, trusting himself and his receivers, but he's playing like he's got three, four Devontae's out there. This isn't Devontae Adams. I mean, it's shocking to me because we had all said coming into this that this is actually going to be better because Rodgers isn't going to have Devontae to be a crutch. So he's not going to be able to just force the ball to Devontae all the time. Well, we were wrong. Kind of. He can't force the ball to Devontae, but he's still going to pretend everybody out there is Devontae. No question. If this is Devontae, it's probably, it's probably a, a completion, right? The routes run a little better. There's certainly going to be more separation, and he'll catch the pass, and he'll be off to the races, right? It's going to be great. He's done this so many times with Devontae Adams and Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb and all his favorite receivers over the years that in his mind, like, this is automatic. Based on their defense, based on, our, on the guys we got, this is where we're going. You don't have to do that. He's not open, so you got to go somewhere else. Again, it's hard to tell exactly who's open because once the ball comes out, people start doing weird stuff. But Samori Ture seemed to have his guy beat. He's running an out route. Assuming he catches it, you know, it's probably a first down. You know, I, I know I'm nitpicking and it's unfair. Like, why did you look there when you should have looked here? Like he has some telepathy or something. But it's just, I don't understand the offense. You know, everything's spread out and you're only looking in one area. You, you might as well just have one wide receiver on these routes and everybody else is just drawing people away. And if that one guy doesn't win, then the whole thing falls apart and we wonder why it's not working. This, this Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy, whatever offense, as much as Rodgers says it's the most beautiful offense in the world, that's great. I'm glad that it's beautiful. But what I'm watching is ugly. <laughs> this is so far from beautiful. And it's just exhausting because it feels like 28, like we saw this in 2018. It's the same thing. You spread the guys out and they run their route and they don't get open. And it's like, what the heck? We brought in Matt LaFleur, right? This brilliant, like unstoppable thing where you put defenses in positions where they can't, it doesn't matter how much talent you have or we have. Like you just, you're not making good decisions. We put you in impossible positions. And it works when we run it, and we just completely abandon it on the last several drives. It's like when we get behind, you know, when we go from first to 10 and first to 20, first and 10 to first and 20, we go into full-on Aaron Rodgers drop back, spread them out mode. And I don't know why, because it doesn't work. It sucks. Like, didn't, didn't we abandon that because Mike McCarthy ran that in 2018 and, and defenses figured that out back then? We're done with this, Rodgers. I'm sorry. We need to move on. It doesn't work. You know, somebody had posted a clip. I know we got to move on. We're almost done anyway. Um, In our Discord chat with uh, Aaron Nagler talking a little bit about this, saying, you know, if we're going to continue to play the way Rodgers wants to play, we need to go out and get better wide receivers, and that's true. But here's the thing. We don't need to go get wide receivers because we shouldn't be playing this style of football. This is stupid. And it's not, you know, his conclusion was, you know, if you're, if you're going to play this style of offense that relies so heavily on wide receivers, what we should do is play reliant on our running backs. And there's some truth to that. But I just want to rely on Matt LaFleur and his offensive scheme, which is going to allow us to, first of all, utilize our running backs more. We're also going to be using more play action, more motion. And we're also going to be getting wide receivers open more often and giving Rodgers easier throws to open wide receivers. You know, we, we run these sort of layered concepts where you don't have to know where to, your eyes either go left, middle, or right. Everybody's kind of just in a line. You got one guy in front of you shallow, one guy in front of you kind of intermediate, and one guy in front of you deep. One of them should be open, throw to that guy. You know, it's all that kind of stuff to simplify everything. You don't want to simplify. This is what's simplified. And I think Rodgers is, you know, he wants to run his, he's made all these stupid comments about how, you know, the, the, the Shanahan offense is great, but there's nothing more beautiful than mine. He talks about the wide receivers, how he, of course, he wants to go out and get better wide receivers. Why? Because he wants to play it his way. He wants to play this BS that doesn't work. And instead of acknowledging my way doesn't work, he's looking at these wide receivers going, why can't you just do it? It's very similar to Joe Barry saying, I don't need to change. You just need to execute. Rodgers is saying, we don't need to change the plays. You need to execute them better. No, dude, stop doing this. You're making it too hard on yourself and too easy for the other defense. For what? Stop it. Anyways, we end up punting. They get the ball. We get one more little uh, slight series here. And does the defense give up? No. They go three and out. 
to end the half. Again, they're running, and Washington's kind of weird in terms of being the first team I've seen that doesn't do a, a good job of, or, or even try to stop the, the linebackers at all. And so there are these wide open gaps. And again, Quay does make the tackle. I'm tempted to not give him any credit though, because he does kind of do that. I'm just going to stand here and wait for you to get here. And it turns into a four yard run instead of like a one or two yard run. But and plus it's a four yard run, which is kind of a neutral play. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, he makes the tackle, but I'm not going to give him credit for it. It's not a positive play. It's a kind of a neutral thing. Next play is another really, really awesome and encouraging play by the defense for a couple different reasons. First of all, pressure. Rashawn gets to the quarterback. I think it's Preston on the other side. I'll confirm that when we check the other angle. But the quarterback does get the ball out. It's actually a really well-thrown ball, all things considered. But Amos comes screaming down the field and punches the ball out just perfectly out of the guy's hand. Really beautifully played. And yeah, it is Preston on the other side. So it's the whole meet in the quarterback thing, uh, meet at the quarterback thing. But they just smashed the guy, and Amos came up and did the same thing. So Rashawn, Amos, and Sav- and uh, Amos just completely blew that up. Next play, they try to run a little screen. Devondre Campbell does a beautiful job, kind of similar to the last time they ran a screen. But this time, Devondre is able to navigate the traffic and bring the guy down. You can kind of tell the whole team is sniffing it out. You know, they're, they, they, they're pointing, they're, they're chirping at each other. And right away, they're, they're, they're looking at the quarterback, seeing what he's trying to do. They're not staring at the guy, you know, the corners are, are staring at the quarterback, not the guys that they're supposed to be, you know, guarding down the field. They kind of know what's coming. So it's just really well played, great discipline by our defense. And again, as soon as that ball comes out, Devondre is just sprinting. Razul is trying to get through his blocker. Savage is running. Stokes is running. And again, he tries to do that thing where he runs behind his his uh, offensive linemen who aren't there yet, trying to block Devondre. But Devondre just gets there a little too quick and brings him down. It ends up being a... Uh, Four-yard loss. There's a penalty offensive pass interference. Obviously, we decline that. Fourth and 10, they punt the ball. Three and out. And and by great plays, not just, you know, Washington suck. Four-yard run, tack, just straight up tackled by Quay Walker. Next play, you got two pass rushers getting to the quarterback and Amos making just an incredible pass breakup. And then the next play, Devondre just doing superhuman stuff. If he's, I mean, again, we're talking inches, inches. If Amos is just an inch off, if he's a, if he's a half a step slower, that's a big completion down the sideline. If Devondre is a half a step, a half a step slower, he doesn't get there. And now there's plenty of blockers, and this is getting, you know, it's a first down for sure. I don't know exactly how much more beyond that, but it's certainly a first down. It's so cliche to keep talking about a game of inches, but you can't watch these games and not see that. The difference between our team being a, our, our defense being a really good defense and a really bad defense is always, always, always inches the offense maybe not as much the offense you're watching going what the heck was that that was 20 feet off defense is always inches the dropped interceptions inches Devondre's pick six inches you know where, where the ball is located and him being there just in time being able to win and wrestle it away inches anyways that's it that's the end I mean there is one play before uh halftime but I don't really care AJ Dillon runs for five yards etc cetera, etc cetera. nobody cares I guess we could look at it, but I don't feel like it. This is a very long episode. This is an hour and a half. This is my long. I think this is my longest ever. We're we're cru- cruising to like sixteen hundred episodes. This is officially my longest ever. Got to find a way to cut these down. They're getting a little long. Anyways, uh, we'll recap what the scores are tomorrow because we got to get out of here. But you guys have yourselves a great day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye.